He's acting a fool. He's gonna get it. There's about 30 of them trailing right there. It's really, really cool. They come roaring up to it. Incredibly good fishing to be had in sheer open water. This is out of control. Oh, he's gonna get her. He got her. Yeah, out in 35 feet of water, right under the surface. I don't know how else you target a fish like that. You can't really tell me. Like, there's no way. See him out there? But the point is, is that he was right under the surface in the water, out in the, just out here roaming in the basin. Kobe and I have been looking at um, bait balls out here. These big brown buggers are putting a hurtin' on these little fry balls that are floating around suspended. Oh, they are ripping apart a ball of bait right there. Oh, they're destroying it. And yeah, I could, I could say, oh, I'm looking for birds and looking for nature's cues to line me up on some of these fish. But the fact of the matter is, is I'm not that good to do that. I might find a seagull or two or something, but I'll tell you what, live has been a big help in that. Live scope just, I mean, there's no doubt that it doesn't put you in the right direction. It's just a matter of finding these, I mean, he piped it. Look at that, that's beautiful. A little spy bait, couldn't say no to a spy bait. Open water fish are just, uh, they're quite, in the summer months, they they're kind of kind of anomalies. They're kind of a, they're kind of they're hard to catch if you don't have the right equipment. I don't want to beat you up, little buddy. There you go. Nice, nice, pretty smallmouth. He's not on the rocks. He's not on the weeds. Just out in open country. When it comes to open water fishing or suspended fish, here's a handful of baits that are kind of my favorites. Now it's very situational and weather dependent, but I'm gonna run you through some of my favorites. And a lot of it begins with a little bit of the mood of the fish, whether you're watching them busting or you're scoping them in open water and see how, how they react. So you might have to cycle through a few baits and kind of key in on one or the other. But one of the first things we'll start with is something that will just bomb right down to them right away. If they're if you're dealing with deeper suspended fish, colder water, something that gets to them really quick, like a jig and wrap, this is a big mag, the Magnum jig and wrap. This thing falls like a rock. That's one of the one of the big things. It, speed is so critical in my eyes when it comes to open water fish whether you're trying to target deep ones or fish that are right on the surface. You know, some of my favorite topwater days have been on a walking bait or a popper, where I can call those fish up. I've called them out of 20 feet of water before to come up and hit a topwater. The thing about a popper is you can let that thing soak and, and you can just pop it, pop it, and those fish slowly come up. It's not like a walking bait where you have to keep it moving, kind of coming back to the boat. The slower it goes, Again, that speed is, can be such a big trigger. The more they get to look at it, sometimes the faster they come up to hit it. So a top water is a very good one. I, I really like a popping bait. Yep, right under the surface, right under the surface. I can see the whole pack of them out there. The fish are unpressured out here in this open water. And there's just, it's, it's tough, to, it's a tough deal. The open water thing is a, a nut that hasn't quite been cracked entirely, I don't think. But guys are getting good at it. Like Cody Huff and some of those guys that are doing a lot of sharpshooting in open water. That's what we're looking for. Let him go. Out here in the middle of the lake, chasing around. But the opportunity is there. You just have to kind of figure out which lakes how is that opportunity? Not all of them have the bait to support it, 
If you look out on live here, as we move around and cover water, this lake has a tremendous amount of bait fish. A lot of these fish, open water, are gonna be keyed in on a minnow of some sort. Think of that when you're open water fishing. Minnows are the key forage out there. So something that kind of replicates a minnow of, of sorts is gonna be something you're really gonna to wanna to stick to. So a jerk bait, always a good one. A good sized jerk bait, um, especially when like you're fighting a little bit of wind. Again, conditions, if I got a blast the cast right into those into the wind i want to you know a little bit beefier jerk bait like will these realis 120s or 30s at 130 with a seven foot rod i can sling into the wind very hard and i can reach those fish that's all that's a casting distance is a big deal so reaching those fish with a big jerk bait is can be very key the fish a lot of times believe it or not the fish will just come right to you and they literally swam underneath the boat. So I'm not gonna touch anything, I'm just gonna keep tabs on them. They're right behind me. That's actually the lower unit right there on live scope. But if you watch these guys, see how they're starting to slide back to the surface? That's exactly what I want them to do. I'm gonna crank up my troll motor and go like hell and trying to keep up to them. <laughs> Let's say I catch one on a jerk bait and the whole school comes following right to the boat. Look at them down here. Here they, they're starting to come up something that comes crawling through the water really, really slow. This is a tiny little tungsten head, doesn't sink very far. This is kind of your, um, I can swim this bait, I can just tight line it, I can shake it, or just demiki the thing right under the boat if I want to. If I wanna just mope that bait right under the gunnel of the boat, that can be a really good, good bait and a good way to catch them, especially if you've kind of convinced the school over your direction. <laughs> we have a big school. Check that guy out. That was the school we were just chasing. I'm out, I'm looking out 200 feet, okay? So this school, they're about to converge right now, but I'm gonna throw on that fresh school. It's quite amazing how particular they can be when it comes to like these little micro feeding windows. These fish start blowing up on bait and you can just get them to bite, you know? You, you almost have to let them start blowing up the bait and then throw in there. Otherwise, you just like, I feel like you can almost shut it down if you try and throw on top of them before they actually start stirring up the surface. They get so clued into to the pressure and, and everything, it can be, it can be tricky. Like they're starting to come up right now. Coming up again, coming up again. They're right under the surface. There they are, they're blowing up. Something slow and right under the surface, these, these little spy baits are really good as well. They're coming up, they're coming up. They're gonna start breaking. Got him. There's about 30 of them trailing right there. I mean, I barely let that spy bait hit the water and I think I turned the reel handle about twice. So that kind of covers, you know, from top to bottom and, and speed. If you're looking at something that falls really fast or something that sits and hangs right on the surface of the water, those top waters, those horizontal jigs, like a big mag jig and wrap, there's a lot of different baits that you can use to get a, an open water fish to trigger. You just kind of gauging that mood of the fish you're dealing with and the day that you have, but this is a good starting point for sure. Um, these are probably some of my staples for, for targeting these open water fish. I would love to just hand you this rod. <laughs> Cause this is prime opportunity to catch multiple fish. They're all right under the boat now. I get it if you want to beat the bank and find those fish doing that, but there is some incredibly good fishing to be had in sheer open water. 